tell us first, how, how does it feel that your film Man Under the Table is being showcased at Slamdance? Yeah, uh, it's, I mean, obviously such a, such a privilege and honor, um, but I think mostly it's just like, I was thinking about this last night, like it's, it's so much the, the best possible fit. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know, it's, it's really exciting. It's, it's, it's really cool. <laughs> no, no, I've, I, I've actually wa watched the film uh, last night and, uh, and, and I, I thought this was very fitting of Slam Dance because, you know, Slam Dance is always known to be outside the box and, uh, and, and pu pushing, you know, pushing the borders and edges a little bit. And this film actually did all of that. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm like, uh, it was definitely on like my very short list of uh, fests I wanted. So like, I'm over the moon, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let, let, let's start off with the easy question is, um, where did you get the original idea um, for the story for Man Under the Table? Why not make, you know, a political movie about fracking or something? <laughs> um, you know, I think it's just, uh, I, you know, I, I bounced around uh, the, the indie film scene in L.A. and I just kind of got embroiled with some some people that were, you know, real full of themselves and uh <laughs> to put it mildly and i just i thought it you know it was just kept circling around in my brain like how odd an experience i was having and uh i think at the time i wrote it it was just the only thing that i could get out of me <laughs> and i and i thought it would be funny to you know sort of make this character who um you know is sort of a shiftless uh you know good for nothing type of just not actually doing anything type of you know person that um it would just be the funniest uh concept for you know <laughs> <laughs> when uh when you created the characters because a lot of these characters are very loonies off the wall in 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 their own way were, were they basically exaggeration, exaggerated versions of uh, certain people or a culmination of pe people that you have met in your lifetime? Is that, it, it's sort of like a satire? In, totally. In Absolutely. Yeah. It's definitely a combination of a lot of people. Um, and then I think, you know, <clears throat> one of the things that I wanted to do was sort of let all the actors come up with their own um, version of what they thought these characters were on the page. And um everybody just immediately went a really fun direction that that worked so um you know it's a combination of being based on on people and and what they did with it yeah so when 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 you actually wrote the story did you actually have the intention of uh, yourself in mind as as you know guy yeah i uh i knew this was going to be something i had to um you know figure out for myself and, and, and not have a, a budget or, or really any kind of backing. So um, it made sense to make the chunk of the, you know, what you're seeing me because I can schedule myself very easily. <laughs> so, so it's, it's fascinating to know is because this film was like on a micro budget and um, you know, could you, could you talk about the experience and how you pulled it off, uh, you know, a film like this on a micro, micro budget? Because, because to, to, a lot of, to a lot of people, they don't understand how, how much hard work actually goes, goes on into something like this or the risk. Totally. Um, you know, I usually will make a few shorts a year um, on my own <clears throat> and just sort of space it out to when I can feasibly do those things, you know. You save a little bit of money, you buy the necessary props, and then you, you shoot it. Um, so I sort of treated it like that. Instead of um, shooting those shorts that year, I kind of just scheduled it out um, in a way that was manageable. Um, you know, so, so it would be like three weeks of making props and wardrobe and figuring everything out. And then, you know, a day or two of shooting. Uh, so it's just as you can do it, you know, you just, uh, you just work every possible angle and, and chip away slowly. Well, then then let, let's talk about some of the production stuff that you actually did. Let, let's talk about that suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
that you use? Is, is that is that is that just out of your closet or <laughs> so what what i decided to do with the wardrobe um again everything sort of being minded that you know a there was no money and b uh it would be my own devices um i got so those were some of my clothes that i owned and then uh i got a lot of the actors to donate clothes that they no longer wanted and everything is just drenched in house paint so everything is just covered in this gray matte house paint that is like super uncomfortable you can't sweat through it um super gross uh but you know it gave the sort of uh, uniform vibe of everybody is in sort of the same thing was was all the filming uh did it all take place in one location, like in someone's building or in someone's room or something like that? So a lot of it, uh, there's, I think there's only three main locations. Uh, and a lot of it was, was my apartment. I, I turned into like the bar setting. Uh, so I lived in a set of a bar for like three or four months. <laughs> and uh, another one was um, a friend of mine had like a studio she, she lent me. Um, and that was a couple locations that were like rebuilt for, yeah. Wow, that that's that's certainly exciting, especially especially on the micro budget. And not to mention, I do I do I do love the fact that your extras were cardboard cutouts or what, whatever they they were. That was that was intensely creative on on your part, in my opinion. Was that was that purposeful or was it was that that's why oh that's all we could afford? <laughs> uh, you know, it's a I guess a bit, bit of both. Um, but the I think the joke for me was sort of how do you um, elicit that sort of like um, nobody cares about these <laughs> people. You know, uh, they're not important. They're not you know usually treated well. Like extras are are um, it's a sad you know like I did a lot of extra work when I was a kid and it's just like not a fun <laughs> feeling uh so i thought to to represent that you know what's better than non-actual people just the shape of people because that's in i feel like in some producers or directors mind like that's all it is a shape of a person needs to be back there you know <laughs> was there a little bit of a green screen going on um through, through, through your film yeah so there's a combination of rear projection and green screen in a lot of like the fantasy sequences um and there's a lot of like miniatures uh that are the sets of those yeah absolutely i'm 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 and i'm 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 curious one of the one of the prop items you act you actually use i have not seen a, a laptop that looks like that what what is that exactly because that looks like it lo looks like a brick from the 90s from like you know the apple newton days when they first came out with the 10 pound tablet you know that's what it looked like to me absolutely um i i love that laptop it's actually on my desk right now um it's something i actually searched for for a really long time because kind of the whole concept of, of anytime you see a prop i wanted it to be like more of an icon you know like more of a what you loosely connect with that thing than than what it really would be you know like if you see a a camera in the movie it's like an old you know vhs camera or um you know phones whatever it is it's the it's the most iconic like version of that so i looked all over for this laptop and i i was scouring ebay for this specific model because i just i, I love the way that it looked um i think i i covered over the the label i forget what it is but i it was a really funny story i was looking every day and they were they weren't that much they were only like 30 bucks but i didn't really have that for the budget and I was like I'll keep waiting and one day sure enough I walked into a thrift store and one of my runs of like looking for props and the exact model was sitting there and it was five bucks <laughs> it was just like a miracle is does does the laptop actually work or is it, it serving as like a paperweight <laughs> it does actually work and uh I intended to actually do those the screens practical but by the time I was shooting, it was like real dodgy and I couldn't like the wires all, you know, wiggly and I couldn't really get it to power up. So it ended up all being post, but it does in theory work. Oh, that is terrific. <laughs> well, be because this is a micro budget uh, film, where, do where did you get uh, all of your cast members from? Are they like uh, friends, you know? 
Yeah, I, I think 90% of it were my friends, uh, people I've worked with before. The guy, uh, John, who, pl who plays Gerald in the movie was another sort of just like miraculous creation that uh, came out of the internet. I put a, just a random thing, casting thing up, you know, explaining that I'm, you know, an idiot making nonsense. And he was just like, I'm in. Uh, and he's such a wonderful guy. I've, I've done a couple of shorts with him now. Um, amazing. He's so funny. But yeah, I think everybody else I knew. Oh, so how, how did you convince everybody else? You basically told them, I'm doing an indie film. Please, please help me. Just like your character. <laughs> it, it, essentially, yeah. Um, you know, I think a lot of times, like, you know, my friends are doing similar things. So there's a nice little like favor system usually swapping around. Uh, so I, I'm pretty sure I've, I've done work for most of these people and we just keep kind of helping each other out. Um, it was not a hard sell, which I was surprised, uh, but that's just the, to the merit of, you know, these people that are just really, uh, they just want people, you know, actors and, and writers and directors, they just want to work on stuff. And when you're good friends with them, you know, you just kind of try to keep that alive. The, the character guy seems to get frustrated with the entire, you know, process throughout the entire film. Do, do, do you feel similar way or you just actually enjoy, you know, this, this indie scene in reality? Um, you know, it's both. I think depending on what you're doing, it can be really frustrating uh, depending on who you're working with and what you're doing. Um, I think he, I tried to make Guy like kind of all my worst qualities, you know, so I tried to make him sort of petulant and impatient and and full of himself and arrogant and all those things that like I don't want to be and, and try to avoid uh, because I feel like that's, you know, that's a, those are qualities that people have in LA and, and <laughs> there's no shortage of. And I just think it's, uh, it's more interesting to sort of have an anti-hero, I guess. Not that he's like the worst person ever, but I, I was trying to make him kind of obnoxious. Since you wore so many hats throughout this entire production, what was the most difficult thing you had to do? I think the most difficult thing and like at least the most frustrating thing is, you know, like I said, you spend all this time like building props and, and figuring out your location and scheduling and doing the producery stuff um, that once you're actually there uh, and you're trying to also like set up lights and, and set deck and shoot, that's usually the worst part. Because you're like in this, you know, this sweat proof uh, outfit and you, you know, have makeup on or whatever it is and you're moving lights around, you're sweating and you're getting frustrated. Um, I think like, but yeah, the actually doing it is always my least favorite part. I get super nervous about the day of, and, you know, uh, yeah, just doing it. But that's the part that unfortunately is uh, really important. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is great. Um, I'm, and I'm curious because you, you, you've done a lot of short films, you know, um, are, are they all sit in similar style or, is, or, is, uh, or this film, Man Under the Table, is com completely different from all the other stuff you've done? Yeah, it's a little different, but it's, it's a bit similar. It lives in the world. Um, I kind of, I'm a huge like sci-fi nerd and, and, you know, like Philip K. Dick and even like, um, you know, like Kafka is not really sci-fi, but like that, you know that world of dystopian sort of um, gray uh, bureaucracy, you know. Uh, I love that that type of world. So I usually am, am somewhere in there. I definitely think there's like shorts that could exist in the same universe, yeah. So I, so I take it there won't be a political movie about fracking uh, f from you anytime soon. <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> well, let, let, let me wrap it up with uh, one, one more question. So obviously, I would, I would have loved to be, you know, at Slam Dance. You would have loved to be at Slam Dance, and we, we could have, uh, you know, done this uh, person to person. But, you know, yeah. the world is going crazy. The world is on fire, and we're, we're speaking to each other virtually. So 
I just want to pose this uh, simple question to you. How are you staying sane and creative while mm. the world is turning right now? Yeah, it's, it's tough. Um, I definitely like, you, you know, you go through phases and it's just like a couple months I, I I'll, I'll be writing every day and then, you know, a month I'll, I will just disappear. Um, I, it's been, I think, you know, it's been obviously like a, <clears throat> a good and bad thing. I think a lot of people have come to like, you know, people are like thinking about stuff and like thinking about themselves and there's a lot of time for introspection, uh, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, it, get, it gets to you. I, I, I try to just stay on some kind of schedule, I guess, to answer the question in short. Mm -hmm. it helps to be like all right at noon i'm going to start writing for an hour or whatever it is editing yeah excellent well hey thank you very much uh for making this film man under the table it was it was quite a, unexpected and i i watched the whole thing like trying to figure out what's going to happen next so uh so it's a, it's it's a great slam dance film hey thank you for introducing this uh, to the world oh thank you so much uh i'm grateful you watched it and thanks for taking some time